Hi everyone, we are here at Small Data SF Conference and I'm super excited to be with Brittany, the CEO of Data Culture. Uh, Brittany, welcome to the Robert Show. I know we met long back at Gartner, Orlando, yes. and finally it's uh, you know good to catch up again yes. and have you on the Robert Show. But uh, just for our audience, would you like to quickly introduce yourself? Tell us yep. more about what uh, Data Culture does. Yeah, so Brittany, CEO of Data Culture, we are a boutique data consultancy uh, specializing in both data strategy as well as data engineering services. Nice. We tend to partner with a lot of companies who either don't have a data team or they have a data challenge that they're trying to untangle and we'll come in and help them get through that. So. Yeah, uh, also uh, just from our research and you know obviously uh, learning more about the things that data culture does, you've written about how most companies don't need more infrastructure but rather better decision making. Can you walk us through an example of something like that uh, where a company thought they had a data problem but had a decision making problem internally yeah. so that would be interesting to know yeah I think it's so often that people think the technology needs to change right. when in reality it's either the questions they need to ask how they're framing the problem um and often the hard part is that when you think the infrastructure is broken you over invest in trying to fix it We've seen a lot of that. We've actually come in after the fact where people have these really bloated data stacks, but they're not actually getting the full benefit of it. I think right. a really good example is, and I hate to say it, but a lot of these kind of uh, BI platforms that optimize for the nth degree of self-serve, when a lot of organizations are just trying to answer simple questions, but they get so bogged down by the complexity of all mm. the filters, bells and whistles, and end up spending a lot of money on those tools that they don't get the value from. Yeah, very interesting yeah. and uh, definitely uh, it comes from you know experience, what you're kind of talking about, so that's yeah. uh, pretty interesting. Uh, I'm kind of also wanting to learn a little bit about uh, the organizations and how they kind of think. So when you're brought into an organization as a consultant, how do you assess like uh, whether they actually have a data culture uh, problem versus a data infrastructure issue? Yeah, I think a big one is understanding what types of questions they're answering today. Totally. And how long that takes. Yep. I mean, I know it sounds ridiculous, but I think anyone who's been in this space will understand sometimes those simple questions take ridiculously, annoyingly long because of the complexity of the infrastructure. Exactly. And so that's often a signal that maybe the organization has the potential to level up, but the infrastructure may be holding them back because there's a lot of complexity in there. Only certain people have the context to answer. Oh, this data is trusted, that one's not. That's usually the signal of an infrastructure issue as opposed yep. to a data culture issue. Yeah, I think that's a great way to you know identify what issue it is. Yeah. So that's awesome. One more thing that I wanted to ask is, since you talk to so many enterprise leaders, since you also talk to so many customers and also those practitioners, what would be your one advice when it comes to data culture versus the data infrastructure? How should they uh, keep those two separate, but at the same time have a common point where they can meet and work together as well? Yeah, I think it's a huge red flag when the people involved in the infrastructure do not have context or awareness about what the business leaders care about. Totally. Keeping them up at night. Totally. And so oftentimes if your engineering team is, let's say, in a completely different office, you only talk to them over email, that's an issue. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I feel like, yeah, 100%, if you can get that gap closer and uh, if you can just make sure that the teams are kind of interacting and cross uh, sharing ideas, it yeah. just makes it easier for them to be in a better spot. Exactly, and I would also add that it's also a hiring thing or a mindset thing, mindset uh, thing. like hiring for engineers that do have interest and appetite and understanding right. the broader business context. Some people view their role as, I just need requirements, and if I don't get good requirements, I can't do my job well. And I personally, like, it sounds nice in theory, but in practice, that doesn't work well. <laughs> That's so true. Yeah. Uh, also, one more thing that I wanted to ask you was about uh, what's one data modeling best practice that you see companies consistently getting wrong, and what's the right way to do it? Uh, yeah, this one's a tricky one. Yeah. Um, the consistently getting wrong is building your business logic in your reporting layer. 
Mm-hmm. I know it happens a lot, especially for companies who are moving quickly, maybe especially startups where they're changing their business model. A lot. Right. There's a lot of tech debt that's built up, and I wish that teams would be less afraid of kind of almost wiping it out and starting over. Oftentimes, that's less effort than trying to untangle what you currently have. Right. But optically, it's hard to convince the business that that's the best approach. So anyway, that's one thing that I often see going wrong. And unfortunately, data cultures often bring in the point when it reaches breaking point and they're like, we're ready to scrap it and rebuild from scratch. But I wish teams would have a little bit more openness early on to invest in managing that tech debt. I, I love it. Uh, I love those insights. So, uh, Britvi, one more quick question for you. Yeah. For those who are wanting to get into the journey of uh, obviously wanting to learn this difference and wanting to even, uh, you know, collaborate with you and uh, work with you, which is the best way to do that and uh, where can they do that? Yeah, so reaching out to us on LinkedIn is okay, a great nice. place. We're very active. Our whole team is active on LinkedIn. Fantastic. We have a blog on our data culture site where we talk about both the work we're doing but also tips and tricks of common data challenges. Yep. So I would say that's the best place to reach us. Fantastic. And people can follow you on LinkedIn to yes. stay updated with all the cult- data culture stuff that's exactly. happening. All right, uh, Brittany, first of all, thanks for taking the time out. Yeah. Uh, you have a fantastic conference ahead, but such a pleasure chatting with you yeah. on the Ravid Show. Thanks we'll for keep the convers- me. Yeah, we'll keep the conversation going and definitely looking forward to 2.0 very soon. Awesome, yeah, likewise. All right, everyone, thank you, thank you very much.